Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm the owner and designer for Gingham and Grit. And I'm part of Lily Jacobs' YouTube Success in Six program. And we're part of this collaboration that's going on for four days. And so welcome. And I will tell you more about who's following me when I get toward the end. But this is kind of a place for us to showcase what we've been learning and to practice. And for me, this is my first solo attempt at doing this. So be gracious with me, and I'm going to try and do my best and see what all we can do. Um, like I said, my name is Kim, and I'm in Texas, and I'm a full-time teacher. So I teach high school math and um, dual credit college. So we're at early college high school. So I teach high school students, college math, as well as geometry and other stuff. So I've been going a little crazy and been trying to figure out how to do my career I've been at for 18 years, how to totally retool it in a day. Basically, it felt like overnight with COVID and everybody being stranded at home. So, oh, so much to get used to. And um, this has just been one component of it all. So um, bear with me while I go through this. I wanted to show you a project today that I've got picked out was really quick the background on this um, Dawn with Reef Decor by Dawn she's also in part of this collaboration had featured a uh, truck and she did half of a wreath or two-thirds one-third of a wreath below it my math teacher sorry and um, took a sign that was probably too big for a wreath and made it into a door hanger and I just love that idea I was struggling with how to create for my boss our valid and our valid she was gifting sorry our valedictorian um, a wreath and so she's going to the University of Texas I'm an Aggie but that's all right and so I'd gotten a sign in and it was this big and I was like oh my gosh what do I do so I had seen Dawn do that uh, thing with the truck, so I thought, I wonder if I could do it with a square sign, and it came out gorgeous. So I'm now addicted to doing these door hangers using this um, method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Dollar Tree wreath. Let me grab that really quick. And I already have one cut up because I cut one of these the other night. So I'm going to use a piece of it. I'm going to use two sections of this right here, but it's just a Dollar Tree. So hang on to these if they break, um, because you can use them here. And then I'm going to use this door sign that I got. It's in the spring uh, section at Hobby Lobby. And so it was $11.99, and the code on it is 5847116. And I'll put it in the comments if I'm able so anyways, Hobby Lobby, and it was $11.99, and I think it's all half off right now. So I drilled four holes right here in the bottom. So that's where we're going to hang the, um, the rail from. So anyways, to get started really quick, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to just use my cutters. I have to use my big ones. Love these. This is K-N-I-P-E-X. I got these from Amazon and these are the best. So I'm just going to cut these off right here. When I did this before, these raw edges right here, I, um, I put hot glue on them to kind of seal them. And anyways, the, I bust my, um, Huckle gun last night, so I'll have to do that later. But I'll definitely do that before I give this to someone. So we're just, I'm keeping two sections, like I said. When I did the big rectangle, the Texas one, I did it by, um, I did three sections because it was a little bit bigger. And that one doesn't want to cut. Oh. And the last one. All right, so put these out of the way so they don't hurt anybody. Put that guy back. Let's cut this off. All right, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pan down so you can see my work area. So pardon me while I do this. All 
All right, and then I'm going to zoom it just a bit. Ooh, I did a little match. Okay, I think you can see pretty well. That might be still too much. Let's go a little bit there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this to this. I'm using black zip ties because the um, the sign's black. So I'm just going to thread this through here. And I'm going to use the first channel right here. I'm not going to tighten it just yet because I want to get it situated first and then we'll tighten it. And I'm using the first two right here to go through. And I'll rotate these around too so the little black cap is on the back. So like I said, I'm, whoop, that one's not clicking. I must have done it backwards. Of course. Um, I'm here in Texas, in North Texas. And I teach in um, an early college at South Grand Prairie High School, so a lot of fun. I miss my kids terribly. I just my heart breaks for all the seniors. I've been making a lot of graduation wreaths lately, and it's kind of my gift to these seniors because I just feel so bad for their circumstances at the moment. Now the one I did the other day dropped down a little bit. Let me see if I can get this to hang a little bit better. If I tighten it a little too tight right there. Yeah, I did see how I did that one too tight and it pulled it up too high. So let me fix that really quick. My one-year-old, well, I guess she's 18 months, year and a half, her favorite thing is to take that bag, you know what's going to say, and just empty it out here in the wreath room. So my wreath room here is um, half of my garage. So we have you know two separate doorways for the garage to open for two cars to come in, and we built a wall and enclosed it's still shifting over that way. There it goes. And we built a wall and then put an air conditioner. So can you kind of see how I did that right there? Let me scoot back to it still a little. Getting my orientation. All right, how I put that in there. All right, so I'm not going to cut these just yet because, like I said, I want to wait till the end so I have the proper hanging and it's all level and this, that, and the other. And so I'm going to do nine twist ties. I'm going to do five on the bottom. And then uh, four on the top. It was so funny when I messaged Dawn after I made the other wreath, and I told her, I was so excited to share with her. Like, look, look what your idea inspired. Because I think that's so fun to do that with other designers. And she was so excited too. She goes, all right, get ready. It's going to be addicting because you're going to want to do it for everything, every big sign you find from here on out. So you can see better. And she was so right. Every time we got to walk into our Hobby Lobby for the first time in forever. And um, that's exactly what I did. I was looking at everything going, hmm, that's a big sign. I wonder if I can make a door hanger out of that. I wonder if I can make a door hanger out of that. So are a lot of you guys having to take on the reins and have smaller kids at home and you're having to teach them right now? I just feel for you guys because 
I teach a spe specific subject, but if I had to do elementary, there's a reason why I don't do elementary. You have to teach all the subjects. And that would just, whew, that would make me crazy. I specialize in one, like I said, I'm math. I teach it with a little creative edge, I like to think. And this one's going to slide. I'm going to fix that one too here real quick. You can put a drop of glue on these to hold them in place. I prefer to pull them real tight and twist it three times. So, um, but with me, you know, breaking this, this uh, wreath holder, the frame, it's not as sturdy, so I don't want to pull too, too tight because I don't want it to pop. But I'm going to try something. Try and do the loop like I did right here on the center one. So, like I said, I did five on the five on the top or five on the bottom. My bad. I think I did it, but that went really cockeyed. Is that a term you still say? Gosh, I'm dating myself. So yesterday we had a fun thing. I just make you not sound like yeah, that's in there. Okay. We had a fun day. A friend of mine had graduated with her master's um, in counseling, and so we did a parade for her. It was a lot of fun. I'm actually gonna lift this. I'm gonna take the zoom down just a little bit. Here we go. Back a little bit. So these are the ribbons I chose. I'm gonna do these two together. And then I'm going to do those two together. And then my mesh that I have is kind of a two tone gold, miracle, and then the chuck, which I absolutely love. And I'm going to do, I cut these 26 inches, and I'm going to do the um, woodland ruffle. So I kind of started some of these last night when my computer, I looked over and it only recorded three, 15 minutes. So we're redoing it. So here we're going to fold it, one, two, three, and actually do four. And I'm going to clip it to get these at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to flip it, because it's curly, we're going to weight it down. And so here we go, one, two, three, four, and we're going to wrap it up. Now I'm just going to alternate my colors, and I'm going to go uh, curl up. So I want it to be a little more funky. If I wanted it more like a ruffle, I would put it down. I want this to be more funky. Yeah. All right. And so I'm going to alternate the mesh. I'm going to do gold to and then the black and white. This mesh is my favorite. I use this so, so often. And last summer, I almost just died because I could not find it. And so I ordered it from Craig Bachman this year. I ordered cases of it because I did not want to be stuck without it again. But I've had, I've had pretty good luck getting it. The gold came from the Reef Shop here in outside of New York Dallas and the Metroplex. And then um, I think the check did too. I either get my stuff there or crack out it. So here we go. One, two, three. Like I said, the, oh, what am I doing? I'm totally losing my thought process here. I was up so late last night trying to figure out how to make it save that video. And my son, who is a broadcast major, was trying to get him, but you know, he'd already gone to bed. And so I didn't have him to ask questions, so we're just kind of plugging along. But any of you guys who are having to teach uh, your children at home, 
really use your teachers and ask them for ideas and all that stuff because we just want any type of way to be able to touch our kids. Not physically, but you know what I mean, to be able to be in contact with them. I just miss them all. We, um, like I said, had a parade last night because it was a virtual graduation for our friend. So we did a parade going down her street. We all made signs and you know, noisemakers, and there might have been some silly string too, but it was just so fun to honor her, and she was just tickled to death. We told her if she'd been down at a and and graduating there in person, she wouldn't have had her own private parade. So it was kind of good she was getting to graduate virtually. She got a parade out of it just for her. We did. I think there were like 20 cars. It was amazing. Let me see that one sliding. That's what the other side did too. This one's in the corner and it's sliding. I don't need to do that. So I forgot it three like I did on the other side. I totally forgot to clean it. I didn't do that. So our campus is all pass fail right now. And so luckily all of our kids are getting iPad laptop devices, you know, with keyboards, because they're college students as well. So we've been um, able to keep good contact and have good expectations for our kids, which has been nice. Because not everybody's been as fortunate as that. I almost did it again. Good gracious, I'm so sidetracked. Or sleep deprived, or one or the other. I've been dealing with the post office. I shipped one day, on the 27th, I shipped um, seven wreaths. I shipped six, and my friend shipped one. And out of those seven, five are lost right now. So we've been dealing with the post office with all of that. And you know, some of the some of the people have been really understanding and some not so much. Um more nice than not. But they were graduation and mother's day gifts and it's been twelve days today just sick. So, you know, filed all the reports. I've been up to talk to the postmaster every day. And um, one of them that was going to Kentucky, oh my gosh, the nicest people at that post office. They have called me and my customer and it finally checked in at the Dallas facility. Now, mind you, I'm in Arlington, which is, you know, 40 minutes away. And 12 days later, it checked in. And so the guy was explaining, the postmaster from Kentucky was explaining to me that um, what happens is that a plant, if someone comes down with COVID, with the, um, yeah, COVID oh, I did some last night, they're over here, sorry. If they come down with COVID, they have to shut the whole plant down. So... Anyways, um, and they, it gets routed somewhere else, so he was explaining what that is. All right, so I started here with, with black and white, then I went yellow. Well, you would think black and white and yellow, but I'm going for symmetry from the outside in because I'm going to put a bow here, and that's going to be covered up. So, sorry, math terms. Um, I'm going to put this one here as well. So I'm going to reverse this here because it's not even going to show right there. Let me take this one. Okay, so we'll push that the mesh down so it doesn't cover our person. But that's kind of what we have going on. Oh, I love it. Okay, so move this one aside. 
Um, and like I said, I'm going to use these ribbon ties right here with the honeycomb to go with the sign. And then I'm going to use these two right here, the bee and the gingham. I always try to put a little bit of gingham in each of my wreaths because my name is Gingham in Brit. And so it's kind of my signature ribbon and my brand. And if I don't have a gingham ribbon in it, I tie my card on the back with a gingham ribbon. So anyways, I usually use rock ribbon. That's kind of where it works. So I'm putting the black bottom on the yellow. So here. So I open, I reopen my ties. A lot of people don't. A lot of people just, um, they just do it in regular. But you know what? I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering if I need to put um, no, it's not yellow. No. That's too brassy. I'll probably go back and put some tubing in. I just didn't have it in my bag, so let's see. Alright, so with the bees, I'm going to put on the check. So I'm opening it up. I grab in the middle. I just do a pinch. Some people gather. So I take mine, I flip it backwards, and I create a crease right there. And then I just pinch. This one that my friend says pinch. She has that great accent. It's so, so, so cute. I hear it in my head when she does it. And I twist three times. And then I take mine, I don't know if you can see it. And I fold it down about a quarter of the way. And I fold it again. And then I tuck. Sometimes I cut them off. But um, because I may come back and do the... In there, I don't want to cut them just yet. And they're tucked away. So I'm doing the top here because I don't want to put ribbons in the middle. This is going to be covered up by the bow, and I don't want to waste ribbon. I'm a string when it comes to ribbon. Stingy, stingy. So I like to save it for later things. This wild thing up there, it's going to poop it. It's going to try and poop it down a little bit. So I fan these out. I'm not necessarily. I'm making them go down and not in X. So I'm going to put another one right here. This one here will be covered. Yeah, when I did the one for the UT sign, and I'm getting ready to do another one for TCU. So some people saw it and they're like, oh my gosh, can you do TCU? So I went and got a sign. Their signs are more expensive than the Texas ones. But I um, went and got the sign and then I'll drill the holes and do it there as well. But on that one, since I used three sections instead of two sections, this one I put nine ties on, and that one I put 11. So it was odd number of both times, odd on top. So the yellow gets the black. Sometimes I think me scrimping and not using ribbon on every one makes more work. But my math brain just won't let me, like, not scrimp, and <laughs> there's so many little things. I, doing wreaths is very, um, you know, monopoly. it's very, there's so much symmetry, there's, you know, you work in threes, you work in the triangles, I mean, there's so much, I mean, just the, the, um, the wreaths being round, oh my gosh, I mean, that's all circles. So if you do that in your often in my geometry class. So my students are always like, when will you use this? And so I whip out my reform and I'm like, okay, here I'm calculating the circumference because I needed to figure out how to space, you know, 10 ties apart or eight ties apart so that way I can figure it out. And they just look at me and shake their head. She has an answer for everything. 
have to do some. But one of my parents was saying, could you do, I heard you do wreaths. Can you do videos for the kids and have a, like a craft project? I need to go get Dollar Tree stuff, so I don't want to, I don't want them to go out. And, but yeah, that might be kind of fun. Or maybe her daughter can just watch this. That'd be kind of fun. So my friend and I, Reve, she's the best. Turns out we were apart for, we used to be really good friends when our kids were little. We went to church together. We were in the same Sunday school class. And um, then our lives kind of, you know, went different ways. Her kids went to different schools. And, you know, you just get so involved in your kids' lives. So my kids, I have one student in college. Well, both are in college. One's in law school and one's in college. And then I have a one-year-old granddaughter. So, um, anyways, we ran back into each other probably about a year and a half ago. She was doing rodan in fields, and I went to one of her parties, and we just started talking. And she's like, so what are you doing other than teaching? And I'm like, well, I'm making reads. She's like, really? Me too. And then it turns out, get this, could you not? We live probably a mile apart from each other and had no idea. So, anyways, we kind of joined forces together. Like my friends um, Rita and Carla did uh, with their once, uh, with their, I can't remember what that group's called. But anyways, they formed a group together. And so anyways, Reve and I had two, and we're called Twisted Grapevines. And we had just started getting underway doing um, uh, wreath parties, wreath and wine parties, and having a lot of fun doing them. So there we are so far. Figure out how to get this. Okay. I might go back in and put a longer um, zip tie right there. Oh, this one's. So, anyways, we um we started all that, and then COVID happened. So, you know, there goes that. So. We've got all of these kits now that we were being made and we were using, and so now we're getting ready to put those in our Etsy stores to do because we've been making um, a lot of these burlap, so, you, so these wreath attachments. So here's like my bumblebee. Um, here's a pineapple. And this is for our 4th of July. And this one's our prototype. I'm making it a little bit wider. But this is our ice cream cone, and we're going with a red burlap in this brown instead. So this is our prototype, but I'll probably put it on the Etsy store too, so as well. So we're doing that now, oh, and I have a gorgeous strawberry that I've been working on. I'll show you that. So anyways, those are all going to be parts of kits that we're doing. But yeah, so there we go. Can you see that? Let me step back. So that's what we have so far. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this aside and let's make a bow. I'm just gonna put one bow on it because it's not super big. And I've got my ribbons. I stop my ribbons how I want them to go. And I don't reverse them out, but I should probably. And I'm gonna do this is kind of like my adaption of a funky bow with three loops. So I do it a little bit differently. So I'm going to make probably 15 inch tails. I can always go back and cut it down. So I measure out 15 inches and I pinch it. And I go ahead and twist it. And I put it down here in my beads of maker. Love this thing because it's so much symmetry. Anyways, um, I got this at Michael's online. We got them for all of our um, week parties and they are I think fourteen ninety nine and these are forty percent off people. And if any of you guys are teachers you better be using your teacher discount book. So I'm gonna do the loops at six. So I put my finger in the loop right here and I pull it out to six but it's still kind of full. So I put it there, I squash it down and then I twist. So I have the ugly side up. And I'm gonna come over here, I thread that down, I pull this out to six. And I use this, I squash it down, 
and then a twist. And like I said, I'm doing three. So, because this is my funky bow. So, uh, I'm go down here, there. I first saw this on um, Julie Samaka. I'm gonna cut this at seven. Did this. She does it by hand. My hands cramp. I can't do it by hand. Plus, my brain needs to see this. Uh, but Julie Samako, she does it. And then I saw where Pauline had done it using a. Um, yeah, I think I have enough. So I did uh, 15 again. I'm putting in right side up, pinch it right there, and then we're going to twist. So Julie, uh, Julie did it, and then Kali did it using this. And I don't know if Kali did three, or if it was Lori that I saw that did three. So I kind of adapted all of these styles, and this is the thin style. So, um, I don't know. My friend Reve does them all by hand, and I just watch her go, and it's just beautiful. It's just poetry watching her do it. But then she looks at me, and I, I can whip them out really fast because I use this, and it's one way of fun. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's just how your brain works. It's, you do whatever, whatever gives you peace. Because for me, for me, reaping is what the peace was. I started reaping while I was a seamstress growing up. And I actually had my own children's line with another friend of mine for a while when we were still at her mom's. But um, you just got to do what makes, what gives you peace. I'm cutting this one at seven two. So I did three the opposite way. So I started this one on the right. I started this one on the left. And so this one, I did two on the right, one on the left. So it's alternating. You can see how this one peaks and that one peaks through right there. And then I put the tails up. But anyways, I was saying I started reefing. And I'd always been crafty, and I started doing a couple reefs here and there. I'll switch to the B. Does it matter if the bees go up and down? Well, I'm only doing my tip. Okay, good. I'm going to do 15 again. I'm going to gather it, twist it. And we're still at six. These are all at six. But I really started reefing about two years, a year and a half ago. You know, really making it. And about a year ago, I started making it in business. Um, but I would just make them, you know, for auctions. I would make them for friends and stuff like that. And um, everyone just kept saying, oh, they're so good. They're so good. So I started watching a lot of videos and improving my craft. And I, I buy kits every now and then because with them, I can improve my craft, learn a new technique, learn something. See how people put colors. I've always been really well with them. Well, the colors because fabrics have always been my mediums, and so ribbons to me are fabric because fabric with wire and edge. So um, I feel right at home with it all. And the embellishments have been fun because I've been getting back to sewing, which I really didn't realize I missed. But so we're back two on this side and on this side. So alternate, alternate, alternate. And now I'm going to switch to one and a half. But um. I had a really bad year of teaching a couple of years ago. And so I just couldn't do anything right. It seemed like it was, it was just, I don't know, it was weird. And so reefing became my escape. And, you know, you could just, you could just go to it and just create and just forget about the rest of the world. And you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so yeah, this is going to work. So this one's 15. Here's my signature gingham rhythm for this week. I guess it was in the twist size too. Oh, I went on that side. I have switch sides. See, I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. My students do that to me all the time. They try to get me off track. It's not my matter. How's your dog? How's that baby young daughter going? I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. You're so funny. 
something it would be like to do. Yeah, this one work. I just won't have the tail that goes up, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. This one just won't have the tail, which is fine because we're gonna have plenty that go up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that back an inch. It will be captured in the zip tie. I gotta be careful with that one. So Okay, see what we got. Alright, and then I have this one. Like I said, I'm I'm making a really big turn. This one's a pretty good Yeah. You talk to yourself. I talk to myself all the time when I'm making a big Oh, she's a good one on the other side. I think it's okay. So this on the left, back on the right. I don't need to reverse for you guys. So I'm going to actually bring this into five now. Maybe she'll bring it in. That's right. It's okay. Like I said, there's not really a lot of videos. I'm going to make this one up. I'll do the threes. And usually on the last two, I take it down to two. But I'm going to keep it at three. I'm changing the color here. Sometimes I do this. All right, and then I love this ribbon. This one has so much funky texture. I got this like in every color. And it's got wire in it, so it shapes pretty. But um, the only color I didn't get in is black. Black would have been too. But I got it in moss green. I got it in purple. I got it in black. I also got it in a lime green. A pink, I think. So I got it at Paper Mart, which is, I think, out of California. It's on the line. But I love it. It just gives so much texture. I have a bow over there. I did that in my teens. So twist. Yeah. So I'm still on threes. It's a bit circle. It's kind of it bothers me that it's right there so close to the yellow. I wonder if I should move it. I flip those two. So I have more of a contrast. I might do that. You know, everything for me in the new thing is about contrast. Oh, it's in it. It's not going to work. I'm leaving. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't. Hold on. Look this way. Ah! Let us see where I was. And at the beginning, it just is. The beginning could go either side. I mean, you know, right side, right, right side, right side, right side, that happens. We're going to flip, we're going to flip, we're going to flip, we're going to put that in right there. So we're going to. I just did the same exact thing. Ah! Forgive me, guys. Let's try this one more time. Um, the goofball. That's what a little slave will do to you. We're changing the things. So this one I did in five, so I'm going to put that in five. Okay. 
I, because I want contrast, I'll tell you. I've done that. I've um, created a wreath, had the mesh all done. Tell me if any of you guys have ever done this. Um, had the wreath all finished. Well, not finished. I just did, did all the mesh, and then I put the ribbons on, and then put the sign on, and you can't see it because there's not enough contrast. What did I do? So what was in my head didn't work out. And for whatever reason, one weekend I was making several new creations and um, every single one had that happen. I was just like, okay, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I'm stopping. So I went because the honeycomb was at five. I made this one at five. And like, I could have had more of the tail go up had I not snipped it off. But we just... No, I don't want to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. That's all right. I could we cut the whole thing, but I don't want to go straight in. That's a mortal sin. This one did Okay. No. Contrast! You see the difference? So, it's a big deal. For me it is, because I hate it when you look at a wreath and you can't like the sign. There was one I saw online the other day, and oh my gosh, there was some money in it. There were so many beautiful elements in it. There's a red bow. And then the sign, I couldn't even see it because it was like the scent. It was too matchy matchy. And you just couldn't see it. Alright, so to finish this guy off. And I'm going to kind of make a center pie. I'm going to do a tail up. So it's just like down a loop. And how you cut? Do you think you're going to be touching? You get so good. And then I'm going to kick off the tail. Let's see how that works. That. There it is. I was trying to figure out how to make it go up. So I had to flip it like that. Alright, that's still kind of good. Okay, that looks good. Alright, already. See what this baby looks like? I've seen it all the time. It's kind of sorry. I get kind of excited when I do it though. Those are my favorite. So I'm going to take the zip tie and then that black one because there's too much black. I'm going to run it under here between. I'm going to push this down. On this side. Going on the one side. Oops. I really should have a longer zip tie, but. That and the bones is just really good. And then it back to the Okay, so I've already kind of spaced everything out the way it should be. The way I like it, you know, with the two, one, two, one. It's all pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and move the knot and the zip tie to the back. I'm going to tighten it up a bit. Squeeze it down. And so I'm going to take a black pipe thing. You can see that I'm going to make that for you right there. And then now, because everything's kind of where I want it, I'm going to pull it and move it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it. And then we can fluff it here in my hand. Put these down, and that's kind of. Which fingers apart, finger uh, rhythm between, and cool. 
always feel like I'm playing with a ponytail. I have a lot of ponytails. Texas, it gets really, really hot. Pat and I was a drill team girl, so we always have ponytails. Or, you know, just, I'd be able to wear a ponytail in Texas. It was hot. How did it Today, the high zone was supposed to be 72 because it rained last night. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. We went, my husband and I went hiking. Kids don't want to do that. But we went hiking to, let's see, how did we do you know that was last week? Oh my gosh, we had so much fun. We, no, we didn't have any else because it was hard enough to breathe. So there's my bow. Isn't that cool? So I love all these big loops. It's just, and I like this poking out. It's like a party going on or something. I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to put that right there. And then let's put this on this aside. And let's bring back our door finger. Set it right there where I put my um, easy bow maker. It couldn't be more in my face if I just bored. Yeah. I think I spend more time looking for stuff. And I actually am really organized, which is weird. Okay. So, I'm going to move my door over here so we can work. Some people have a little stand that they work on. <laughs> Let me lift this up. Hang on, watch. Be careful, sorry guys. There we go. Right. Okay, so let's put this guy on the top. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, I love this. And so I'm coming here. Just going over this uh, in between these two curls. Put my bow right here. And I actually probably put down just a little bit because those pokey parts, the ribbons that were cut at seven inches, they're going to stick up out of the top. And I don't want them covering my side. I love my garage. I have this big old um, window over here that's just beautiful. I'm so lucky. I call it the grotto. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I dovetail the ends. So I'm going to fold them in half and shorten them a little bit. One, my one and a half, I just do them um, a rectangle. The two and a half, I do Sometimes. I love this polka dot. The colors are just so pretty. So see how it's kind of a party up here at the top of all these little parts? I just think it's fun. Kind of, it kind of looks like the living guys that goes in there. So, so there we go. And then the bottom, of course, you know, just come in here and angle we'll cut the one in half. And then dovetail the bottom. But see how I like this one because you don't have like just this plethora of tails down here that are super fat. You actually get to see all the different tails. 
and the curl of me down here. Um, it's just, I just really like it. I just think it's really festive and fun and flirty. Who knows? So there it is. Oh, at the top. So I made this little bow right here. Um, I took three pieces of ribbon that were six inches long, dovetail both ends, and I just pinched them in the middle. I put three together. And then I tied it with a um, pipe cleaner in the middle, and then I took a little ribbon and I made a little knot on it. And I put another pipe cleaner back here too, so I could attach this to the sign. Because it came with a bow up here already, so I didn't know whether I wanted to use that bow or whether I wanted to, you know, put this bow right here onto this. I kind of like it. So I kind of have that bow. So that's kind of there. Um, I got some honeycombs that I could go back and put one in, but it's kind of busy already. I do think I want to put the um, the tubing in here, so I'll probably, if I have some in the right colors, I'll probably bring the tubing back and put that in there. But let me see if I can get a close-up for you guys of our project. I'm going to pull that in. Oops, I don't want too far. But there's a little bit closer for you. Um, so that's our project for today. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, I did. I keep learning more and more with these things. So just give it a try. Like I said, I drilled the holes a quarter inch up from the edge. So don't get too close to the edge because you don't want it to rip. And I'll go back and I'll tighten those. But if you want to see from the back, this is what it looks like from the back. So, whoops, I'm grabbing the sign that I had on the door. My back. Oh, I think I tied it to it. So, hmm, there's that. So, anyways, but there's, um, that's what it looks like from the back. And that's what it looks like from the front. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I really did, because I keep getting reinforced that I can do this with more and more signs. And I just think it's a fun alternative, especially when the, the sign's kind of big for me. I like to make my signs on the 14-inch um, Dollar Tree frames because shipping is less. So um, that seems to work for my market that I've figured out. So anyways, that's there. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you for being a part of my first ever uh, YouTube production. Um, following me is going to be um, Sweet Tea Makery. And Peggy's going to be there. She's going to be on at 5 o'clock. Easter's standard time. For me, that would be 4 o'clock because I'm central. And she's going to do a patriotic tobacco basket wreath. Say that five times fast. So a patriotic tobacco basket wreath. And that's going to be Peggy with Sweet Tea Makery. So thank you again. I appreciate your time. Please subscribe to my channel because we're going to be bringing all these kits to you. And with all these fun new um burlap attachments we've been making so hope to see you again and hope to see you on the live next time thanks it's been fun appreciate it